Hi, and welcome to this lesson on vertical motion under gravity. The force of gravity causes all objects to accelerate towards the Earth. If we completely ignore the air resistance, the acceleration is constant. The acceleration doesn't depend on the mass of the object. This means that if we release a feather and an apple from the same height, they will hit the ground at the same time. Let's look at some examples from the Edexcel A-level textbook. A book falls off the top shelf of a bookcase. The shelf is 1.4 meter above a wooden floor. Find the time the book takes to reach the floor and the speed with which the book strikes the floor. Let's consider the positive direction downwards. We will model the book as a particle, writing out all the letters found in the constant acceleration formulae. S-U-V-A-T, hence they are called the SUAT formulae. We need to find the T, so we need this letter. We have got the S given, which is 1.4. We can assume the book has an initial speed of zero. Since the book is moving freely under gravity, the acceleration is equal to 9.8. We don't have the V given and we don't have to work it out. So we need to pick the formula out of these five, which doesn't contain the V. Choosing the formula S equals UT plus half AT squared, replacing the values, we have 1.4 equals 0 plus half times 9.8 times T squared. Solving it for T, T squared is equal to 0 0.2857. Since we are not interested in negative time, we're only going to take the positive value. So the time taken for the book to reach the floor is 0.53 seconds. We must give our final answer to two significant figures because it has to be consistent with the degree of accuracy used for the value of g. For part b, we need to work out the speed. We're going to use the formula without the t in this situation. v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 as. Replacing the values, we will have 0 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 1.4 is equal to 27.44. Square rooting this, we are going to give the positive value of this. Finally, we can say that the book hits the floor with speed 5.2 meter per second to two significant figures. A ball is projected vertically upwards from a point X which is 7 meter above the ground with speed 21 meter per second. We need to find the greatest height above the ground reached by the ball and the time of flight of the ball. Writing out SUVAT, we circle the S because that's what we need to work out. We know our initial velocity which is 21 meter per second. We know the final velocity is zero because the ball at its highest point is turning around. So for that particular instant, the speed will be zero. And if you take the positive direction going upwards, then the acceleration is going to be minus 9.8. We need to use a formula without containing t. Using the formula v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as, replacing the values we will have 0 squared equals 21 squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times s. Rearranging this, we find the value of s is 22.5. This here is the movement from x all the way to the top, but the x is 7 meters above the ground, so the height reached by the ball is 7 meters plus 22.5, which is 29.5 meters. This is why a diagram is very, very crucial whenever you're solving mechanics questions. To find the time of flight of the ball, we can consider the final position of the ball, that is when it reaches the ground. At that point, the displacement is minus 7. Our initial velocity is 21 meter per second. Acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8 and we need the time. So the formula that we are going to choose is the one without the v in it. s equals ut plus half at squared. We will then have minus 7 equals 21t minus 4.9t squared. Rearranging it using the quadratic formula 
the two possible values of t will be 4.5965 and minus 0 0.3108. We are interested in the positive time, so the time of flight is 4.6 seconds to two significant figures. Remember, we have used the gravity as 9.8, so we must run our final answer of the time. A particle is projected vertically upwards from point O with speed u meter per second. The greatest height reached by the particle is 62.5 meter above O. We need to find the value of u and the total time for which the particle is 50 meter or more above O. Drawing a neat diagram to represent the journey of the particle, starting at O, we label the initial velocity as u, drawing the positive direction, in this case I will consider the positive direction as being upwards. We know that the greatest height is 62.5 meter, that's where the turning point is, where the velocity is equal to zero, then the particle will start moving backwards. We know the acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8 since the positive direction is going upwards, gravity going downwards. We need a formula that doesn't contain t but contains all the other letters listed here. Using the formula v squared equals u squared plus 2as, replacing the values, rearranging to get u squared which is 1225, square rooting it, we will have 35 meter per second to work out the total time for which the particle is 50 meters or more above O. We know S is 50. Now we know the initial velocity is 35. Acceleration is minus 9.8. We don't know the time. When we consider S as being 50, we will have two values of T on its way up and on its way down. Using a formula without the v, s is equal to ut plus half at squared, replacing the values, solving it using the quadratic formulae. We will have the two values of t both positive. Subtracting these will give us the answer that we need. And finally, writing our conclusion, the particle is 50 meters or more above O for 3.2 seconds to two significant figures. Let's look at a final example. A ball A falls vertically from rest from the top of a tower 63 meter high. At the same time as A begins to fall, another ball B is projected vertically upwards from the bottom of the tower with speed 21 meter per second. We need to find the distance of the point where the balls collide from the bottom of the tower. Labeling the displacement of A up to the point of collision as S1 and labeling the displacement of B to the point of collision with A as S2. The A is moving downwards, so we can take the acceleration due to gravity as positive. However, B is moving upwards, so the acceleration of B due to gravity is negative. Writing out what we know about the motion of A, for B, the motion is upwards. Writing out what we know about the motion of B, the initial acceleration is 21 meter per second. The acceleration due to gravity here is negative because the B is moving upwards, so it's minus 9.8. Then using the formula of, a, of the displacement as S equals ut plus half at squared, substituting the values that we know, the height of the tower is 63 meters. We know S1 plus S2 is equal to 63. Adding up the two equations, the one we found from A and the one we found from B, we have S1, which was 4.9t squared, plus S2, which was 21t minus 4.9t squared, and this is equal to 63. We managed to eliminate the letter S. Simplifying this, we have 21t equals 63. So the time is equal to 3. Substituting this into the S2, because we are interested in the distance from the bottom of the tower to the point of collision, that is S2, equals 18.9. We can write our conclusion. The balls collide 
19 meter from the bottom of the tower to two significant figures. And we must write our final answer to two significant figures because the gravity is given to two significant figures, 9.8.